and Inside Infinite for Forge Mode, PC requirements for Halo Infinite, and the art style for Zombies? Well, I answer that and many more of your questions in this video, so stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here and today we're doing a little bit of a different video. We're answering questions from the community provided by you guys on the channel. Recently I went on my community page asking you guys, hey, if you have any questions about Halo or Halo Infinite, let me know and get a chance to be put into a video. Well, this is that video. I pulled some questions that were left in the comments of that post. So if you guys want a chance to be part of the next Q&A video, make sure you tap subscribe to catch when those posts go live. I have a feeling I'll be putting up another one rather soon. The Drifter asks, with the new art style, do you think zombies in zombie game modes will look more like the Flood? This is actually a rather interesting question. When I sat down and thought about it, that well, art style that's probably changed the most for any kind of game mode or any aspect of Halo has been the representation of zombies within Halo. The first zombies just started out as a custom game mode the community came up with back in Halo 2. One team was green, one team was red. And then with Halo 3, they actually made it into the infection game mode, but it didn't really change the visuals of the characters at all or anything like that. It wasn't until Halo 4 that we actually got a visual change in the infection game mode where you actually looked like an infected Spartan, which was a really cool idea. Though so this change in how the infected Spartans look didn't really come off looking like the Flood. They looked more like, I guess, kind of like how they would expect like a zombie to kind of look like, but it doesn't really match like the Flood kind of aesthetic that we've seen previously in Halo. And I'm sure you've seen some of the screenshots, especially from Halo 4 with like that weird smile that they have. Like, I guess it's supposed to be kind of like a maniacal kind of smile, but it just kind of, to me, comes off as rather goofy and not really that interesting to look at. Though I do think it's a really cool idea to integrate like the sword as part of the character's arm. That's much more flood-like, so I do like that aspect of it, but I think just the visual aesthetic as a whole doesn't really match with the flood. But then we had Halo 2 Anniversary, which I think has the best version where it looks like you have an infected Spartan. It looks gross and misshapen and actually rather frightening. It still looks like a Spartan, but it's very artistically different. And it looks like they're infected with the Flood virus, which I think is super cool. If uh, Halo Infinite went this route, I'd be totally down with that. With Halo 5, they definitely toned that back a lot. It made you look like a regular Spartan. I believe they just turned you green. You had like a green kind of trail behind you as well, which actually is also a really cool effect. I like that trail effect. It makes it look like kind of like oozing or like smoky kind of musty grossness coming off of them but what will 343 do with it i mean there's a million different ways to go about doing it what i would personally like to see is have like the base of like the halo 2 anniversary spartan right at the infected spartan look but then maybe also bring in that infected sword look from halo 4 instead of having like holding a sword and also maybe bringing in that trailing effect that you had from halo 5 personally i think that'd be the perfect blend of all the different kinds of zombie styles that we've had for Halo all together in one. But let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Nitro Undertaker asks, do you think the Forge team will get their own Inside Infinite dev update? I feel like something like this would be a little too in depth and specific for what they're talking about for these updates. These All these updates are rather high level, like talking about the general of the sandbox, what will you be using in the game? The first one we have is just to talk about the graphics in general. Then the third one we had was about the environments as a whole. I would expect these uh, development updates to end probably with the last one being in May. As we do know, E3 is happening in June. So likely that's when we will see the gameplay reveal of Halo Infinite and everything that they have to showcase for us. Probably some multiplayer gameplay I would expect there as well. And of course, a corresponding blog update talking about everything that they showed in there with a little bit more context. So I expect a development update in March. April and May, and that would be it. So we do know the next one's gonna be, for March, is gonna be the audio team. So that leaves two more infinite development updates. And I think that something like Forge would be too specific of a mode, because like, why wouldn't they do multiplayer? Or why wouldn't they just do campaign? They've been doing just overall little aspects of the game and nothing too specific on a mode. So I would not expect anything from Forge when it comes to these development updates. Maybe with the April or the May development update, we might get like some kind of hints showcasing like, oh, we have this other new feature because all we know right now of Forge is that there's an undo and a redo button. Other than that, 
That's it. That That's literally all we know. And Forge never really gets like a huge spotlight. It's a really important feature for Halo, but it's nothing really there to really bring people into the game. I guess there's nothing as flashy as you would say for like multiplayer or campaign with these crazy moments, huge explosions, and just awesome gameplay and stuff like that. With Forge, you're just sitting there tinkering with objects the whole time. Not the most exciting thing to watch. Ariel Garcia asks, do you think the requirements for Halo Infinite on PC might be to be able to play at 1080p 60 FPS greetings from Mexico. Well, first of all, hola, como estas usted? Currently, I don't even think 343 knows truly what their PC specs are going to be for the game. I think they have a rough idea of what they're kind of looking to accomplish. They know the limitations of the Xbox and the limitations of hardware when it comes to the PC at the upper limits of stuff. And But they also know the lower limits, but they want to try to find this nice middle ground where it's visually appealing to look at, but also it doesn't completely bog down your system. With the recent screenshots that we were shown in the most recent development update from 343 showcasing that day-night cycle on this one station right there. It really just gave you a really amazing visual presence of the game. And to me, I actually got like huge Red Dead Redemption 2 vibes from looking at the visuals of this. Uh, just because I think that Red Dead Redemption 2 was such an amazingly beautiful game. Utilizing nature in such an amazing way and also having each area of that open world so unique and recognizable to where, where you're riding around on a horse, you know where you are depending on the landmarks in the area. They mentioned that specifically as well within Halo Infinite and I think the visual fidelity that 343 is reaching for is probably about at that bar if not a little bit more. So to compare the PC specs of Red Dead Redemption 2, it's this. So the minimum requirements would be an i5-2500K with 8 gigs of RAM, a GTX 770 or a Radeon R9-280. And then there's recommended, which requires an i7-4770K or a Ryzen 5 1500 with 12 gigabytes of RAM, an NVIDIA 1060 or an AMD 480. Though I do expect Infinite's requirements to be a little bit higher than this since Red Dead Redemption came out a few years ago, though it does look visually beautiful still to this day. I would expect maybe like a for PC parts for like an NVIDIA, maybe like a 1080, maybe it might be the recommended. I think you might see the 1060 become the minimum requirement. So currently I'm on the market for a 3080 because I want that RTX so badly when it comes to Halo Infinite. I want that game looking absolutely beautiful. Ghost Bam asks, will you ever give me the details? Well, did you stay tuned throughout the whole video? Dark Spartan asks, will there be a customs browser at launch? Personally, I think there will be, uh, especially since we have the custom game browser that came in with Halo 5, which is a very utilized tool. I like that a lot. They're bringing it into the MCC. Uh, currently, right now, the current status, it sounds like it's not gonna be actually be able to make it into this flight, so it might not come with season six, maybe like a mid season six flight, mid season six update or something like that. Uh, they just need more time with it. But since we've seen it in Halo 5, it's coming in MCC, I'd be so surprised if it does not happen with Halo Infinite. Will it happen at launch? I hope so. I expect it to be there. Though I will not be surprised if it's not there at launch and come in at a later seasonal update, just maybe to bring some more hype to the game or something like that. Because I think the custom game browser isn't like a necessary feature to launch with Halo Infinite, but it would be greatly appreciated. Abundance Journey asks, are you okay with E rating. This has certainly been a little bit of controversy with Halo Infinite ever since the switch to T, ever since Halo 5. A lot of people are worried about the T rating, saying that they will be afraid to really push the envelope. When it comes to graphic moments within the game, like that part in Halo 3 when you see that Marine just turn into a flood form in front of you, that's a bit grotesque right there. A CE actually had like a lot of blood, and there were some people like with exposed ribs and pores showing and stuff like that. Like, Pretty gruesome stuff. Obviously, it didn't really come across that way with such low resolution on the geometry and textures and stuff like that, but there was like a lot of blood and stuff like that. Halo 5 it definitely became a le lot less gory of a game. You know, there was less blood splattering around, stuff like that. Nobody like morphing into dismembered hollow shells of bodies and stuff like that, like we've seen previously in Halo. But I've never really viewed Halo as like an M rated game, to be honest. Like the language in the game that's used is rather clean. It never really was anything like over the top gory. We're not talking like Gears of War gore where you shoot somebody with a shotgun and they explode into a million pieces. No, they just have like a little blood splatter, fall over to their death. I feel also ratings have definitely loosened up a bit over the years. Uh, definitely, I think back in the day, if you were a shooter, I think pretty much just in general, 
your game was going to get rated M. And with Halo's relatively squeaky clean style of art style and gameplay and just uh, the amount of gore that's in the game really is so minute that it's, I've always felt like it's been more of a T rated game than an M rated game because it's definitely more audience friendly than Gears of War, more audience friendly than Call of Duty, and kind of falls in line with Destiny, which is also rated T. So as long as there really aren't any curse words or nudity in the game, which Halo's never really been known for, I think a T rating would probably fit the game just fine, and it probably could, you could tell the story how they want to tell it with a T rating without having to go full M. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I greatly appreciate it. If you've been on the loop for Halo for the last few days or so or missed any content from me recently, check out the videos on the screen right here. I've got a link to all my news and informational videos right there. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.